thank you for that sexual experience. But like I was saying, Brooke has a new boyfriend. He's black. I, hate that I think boyfriend. he's a good guy. I hate him. Uh, well, what's that? Who's that, brother? It's me, brother. Don't you recognize my voice, brother? Brother, it, it, this isn't in the room, brother. This is my head, brother. Who are you, brother? I'm inside your head, brother. I'm, I'm you. I'm a different facet of you, brother. Uh, facet? Are you me from the future, brother? No, nah, brother. I'm, yeah. I'm the present you, brother. I'm Bigot Hulk, brother. Don't you remember me, brother? Bigot Hulk? I'm Bigot Hulk, brother. I tell you about whenever there's Negroes around. All right, whenever there's a nigger around, I tell you. I tell I'm you not racist, out. brother. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not racist. You are, brother. That's the thing. You are. Look at you. Look at you. You're big. You're orange. You got that, that nasty-ass fucking haircut. You haven't cut since the 70s. Look at us. I like it's okay. We're racists. Just accept I like that shit. new boyfriend, brother. He's black, but I like him. You don't like him, man. You're just fucking saying that, brother. You don't believe that, though, brother. I'm going to tell you the truth. Look, he's no good. None of niggas are, okay? Oh, don't talk, right don't now, talk like that. Up. I've wrestled with Superfly Jimmy Snucker, brother. He was brown, the rock. And you hated Jimmy Snucker, brother. You were a Booker, Booker T, brother. Called you a nigger on air, brother. Didn't you hate that, brother? Nah, it, it, it bothered me just a little bit, brother, but it didn't get on my nerves to that extent, brother. We actually hated that, brother, brother. Like, I don't... Look, this is being recorded? Yeah, brother, I'm recording it right now. I'm sitting at the TMZ, brother. I'm sorry, brother. They bought me off, brother. You're listening to the Double D's podcast. I'm Dom. I'm the respect. We got a great set of tits. Dude, I get so angry thinking about this kid. Because that's what most people are bitching about. I'm from New York. You heavy. We like to eat out here. You, know? you gotta stop looking at interacting with people online as a cheap date. <gasps> My father used to drink. Get the fuck away from me. I'm done. I come a lot, by the way. Hey, you're a good boy, the rap star. If you didn't say it, somebody in the comment section would have said it. It's like how you feel when you're having a paranoid high. That's a dynamic connection right there. You're listening to the Double D's Podcast. I'm Dom. I'm D Respect, brother. If you're listening to the Double D's Podcast via iTunes, we always want to remind you to be active within the iTunes community. Please comment. Please subscribe. It helps the Double D's Podcast out so well very much. Uh, My throat hurts from doing Mm -hmm. that uh, racist Hogan impression. Uh, My throat hurts from doing the non-racist impression. See, My brother... I, th- I think we should. I, I think we should do a better to sort of settle this before we start. Oh, anything. Okay, okay. I, okay. I got some water though. Okay. I see. I don't need water because I'm just. It's, it's all natural. <laughs> you can call- say whatever the fuck you want to say, brother. Uh, oh. This week at SummerSlam, you're going fucking down. Mm. Oh shit! Hold on. I, I think I bit off more than I can chew. <laughs> you have no mic skills, brother. You're just a bitch ass Dominican, brother. I know what you are. You're just a. You're just a Negro. Okay. <laughs> I said it. I don't care if I get fired from the WWE. <laughs> You're just a little, oh, no good Negro. I think, you know what I just did? I think I just pulled off a Beak Mill. <laughs> I, I, I fucking called you out. Are, are you in the car saying you're going you're gonna to yeah. drive the ZC and then record when you get yeah. there? Moving with my auntie and my uncle to Bel Air. I, I fucking overwhelmed you this. Just got, this. Bo- you got body, brother. <laughs> you just got just body. Admit, you ain't got no bars. Kendrick got, blasted you. Check it out. It, you, you got body by a singing nigga. <laughs> Is that a world tour, your girl's tour, brother? <laughs> Hulk Hogan nothing, needs nothing to spit the, same. the first. Okay, brother. Oh, God, okay. Yeah, that really makes my throat hurt. Jesus Christ. So we're, we're not going to, uh, you know, we're not going to go into the whole backstory of everything. Because, I mean, we spoke about the whole, the suspicion of the Ghost Rider thing and all that last week. But do you have any comments whatsoever on both of these battle records on Charge Up and Back to Back? It was all right. I, I I wish he had been more specific. It's like Meek, you a bitch. Like just come out, come mm-hmm. out, come fucking out. Don't talk about the elusive, um, fucking uh, ethereal, uh, uh, ambiguous rapper. No, train your sights on him. Let us yeah. know who it. We know who it is. Come out and fucking say it. You know what though? He is affiliated with Nicki, and perhaps that's why he didn't. He didn't want to do it or something. I think he wouldn't have mentioned his name regardless. I I think even if it was Rick Ross, he probably wouldn't have mentioned the name, I think. Damn, bro. Yeah, but um, my thoughts, I I thought the the record, it was was okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, which one? Uh... Oh right, there was a freestyle yesterday, and then there was one That's before that. Guy right? over here, fucking guy over here, is fucking. 
I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not. I, I'm sorry, guys. I apologize. I'm not asking him questions about fucking. What was the name of that band you, you were mentioning last week? That faggot band. To Tame Impala. So, did you hear the Tame Impala track? Like, did you like it? Was it like really ethereal and like ambiguous? I don't know. I'm just using those same words again. That was a shitty. That was an impression of me just now. Uh, no, that was an impression of somebody who's like your best friend and really gives a shit about what you listen to. Yeah, man. It was. Hey, uh, dude, just, I really care about that. Floaty, like. New Beach House Depression Cherry is just, uh, it's just, it's just so beautiful. I, I, I love the sound of Victoria Legrand's voice, and I, it just makes me want to come. You know what I'm saying? But what, I, what do you think I was, it? I was of the opinion that the first record was the tone applied. Everybody seemed to complain about the fact that he was, it was kind of dull, it was kind of anticlimactic. It was kind of like, oh, you know, uh, you know, he gonna charge up. But I think it's soft. I, I, I think. Look, I'll take it back to. Uh, when Jada Kiss uh, went at 50 Cent. And the first thing that Jada said on his animal verse was he said, I don't want to sound mad, I feel marvelous. And I think that's the perfect way to start off a beef. It's just like... It's like, you didn't even make me mad. No, you didn't make me mad. I'm just going to respond to you and fucking kill you. And I think his whole tone sort of implied that. Uh, Because, you know, what the hell is Meek going to say to him? The second one, I felt was... I'm not sure if the second one was made because there was no response or the second one was going to just be tacked on was what was planned to be the the, the drop after the, the second response. But after Meek's first response, I'm sorry. But the second one was like, I loved how petty one of the lines were in the second verse, in the, in, in the second disc. When he said, um, he said, he said, I made another one. You still ain't did shit about the other one. Like it's still, it's so petty. It's like you I know, it's like two. he's a little what kid in in a yard and he's sticking his tongue out at him. He's like, mm, I did another one. I did another one. And they're like yelling at each other. It's so petty that I love it. I love the fact that this big commercial artist mm-hmm. is really embracing like that. It's just so competitive. It's like it's like when you're out on the on the ball court and you just say some dumb shit to some dude who's guarding you. It's like you know, it's like stop checking me, stop checking me, stop reaching, stop reaching. It's like I made another one, faggot. You still haven't said one about the first one. You know what I'm saying? I love how petty it is, and he's not hiding the fact that he's totally in his feelings about it and that he's just totally going to be petty about it. I love that. You know, yeah. other than the Nikki lines, of course, which which were great. I listened to this song on the toilet. My friend had texted to me. Um, <laughs> he, he texted to me. I woke up in the morning. He was like, oh, you know, uh, Drake did another one. I was like, oh, shit. So I listened to it while on the toilet. And when he said, is that a world tour or your girl's tour? And did I you was just like, drop a deuce. The, the deuce was dropped. as you The, the, the deuce... <laughs> The deuce came out because of that line. I was like, <laughs> as soon as he said it, uh, <laughs> holy the boys, shit! You know, I I know where he got all this energy. Where uh, all this 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 deep energy? I know where it came from, man. The Sprite commercial. Ah, okay. 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 That's what it is. Okay, that's where he got it from. I get know, it. Yeah. Sprite. Know yourself. Know your worth. Know yourself. Nigga. Know your worth. And I'm, I'm looking at the Sprite can. I'm like, yeah, this company understands me. They get. They they get the, the the urban black male. They understand. <laughs> Which I'll comment, even though I don't want to revert back to the, the Ghost Rider stuff. I will say that DJ Funkmaster Flex, who's been catching a lot of flack. Oh be- yeah, yeah. <laughs> How could he just do that? Uh, How could I he just say that he was gonna? He had he had all this info and they just not put it. <laughs> Listen, I was I was one of those guys listening to Hot ninety seven. So, there's something so funny about that, dude. Yeah. You you have to, you you have to admit that. It's, yeah, it is. I'm not a big. I'm not a big flex guy. He's done stuff like this. No, before. but listen, you're just you're standing, you're standing at the doors, and it's you're you're at a bakery. They're like, "Hey, man, them new croissants, them new croissants, about to, about to drop seven p.m." Just, he just, and everyone's waiting outside the bakery, and it just and it just never happens. <laughs> just, and someone someone not being given something by a, a source that is pretty. He's a professional. So yeah. just, he's just not showing up. That's hilarious to me. Just for ratings, probably. Just for ratings. Unless, of course, he like actually did. did. Unless, of course, <laughs> there's a chance that he actually thought that he had an inside person that was going to leak the track to him. Unless that's what he thought. But I don't listen to Funk Master Flex's show enough. I don't know <laughs> what he said after that. But, yeah, I mean, Funk Flex had – he made a very good point um, when he said – his main problem with the fact that Drake possibly doesn't write his music is that he's on those Sprite commercials with Rakim, 
I'm going to Sprite cans with mm-hmm. Rakim, Nas, and Biggie. So Sprite is his biggest concern. <laughs> just take them off the just take them off them cans, God. It's an example. It's an example. No, it's as right. to, that's what yeah. he's most worried about is the, is the soda. He's that's more my of a favorite Coke soda guy. too, God. I am more of a Coke guy. You know what I'm saying? They put him on Pepsi or something. Stop it! Stop bombing me. It's you know it, to me. I think it's because it illustrates that Drake has been taken seriously to that point that they would put him. In a Mount Rushmore sort of a situation but with he heavy did the hitters same like thing. that, Funk Flex. Maybe this is performance art from Flex. He mm-hmm. did the same thing. He just the thing like that's worse than a ghostwriter saying like your word is your bond as a as a DJ as a guy who's like giving people inf- like you're supposed to give. But these weren't words from somebody else. Like there wasn't like a mini. It wasn't like a bigot flex. I'm saying in his no, head. He said it though. Well, he, he wrote said it. That he had the information. He wrote it. No, this isn't. No, this, this is a terrible example by you. This, this is a terrible example, and I will prove to you why it's a bad example because it came from Flex's head. The only reason why is he, he's just lying. So this is kind of like this is kind of like when a rapper says this he shoots people and he does. You no, know, this is what I'm saying it's a good point. No, he no, lied no, it's about not. having no, it's this information. He didn't have it. So that's worse than having a ghostwriter. Oh, I thought you meant it's similar to having a ghostwriter. No, 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 no. It's it's worse. I'm saying it's it's it's. It's not similar at all. You're not giving people any product. Like, making a... Fa- <laughs> what if he had posted some shit where it was, like, a, a clearly fake Drake? Just like, hey, man, yo, these aren't my buzz I'm about to put on, man. Like, an obvious, obvious fucking fake, fake dude. You could probably find a guy been. out there that sounds exactly like him. You could definitely find somebody like that. Especially in New York, New York City, you could find somebody like that. Jay Farrell doing his impression on Sway. You know what I think would have been great if Meek would have just done this. And I think at this point, this is the only thing where he can sort of save face. If Meek goes to Hot 97 and does a classic Flex freestyle, like he's in the studio with Flex and he's got like a three minute freestyle that he just spits at Drake live on the radio. I think that's the only way he can come back from this because that's when you're really digging into like the grassroots of this battle shit. That's when it's like, you know, when you you can say whatever you want about DJ Funk Master Flex, but you cannot d- disregard his his uh well, not let's not say his credibility, his clout. You know what he means to the game, you know? So if you're across from Flex and Flex is dropping those bombs and it's like, "Flex, can I talk to the city, please? Can I talk to the city? Can I talk to this faggot?" Oh my god, it would be amazing and Meek just comes in flexing on these niggas. I'm like, "Pop out with his spinach." If he just, "Oh my god, that would be amazing." But he's not going to do that. I'm pretty sure he is going to drop a track, but you know, whatever. But um but yeah, I mean, the the, the two the two tracks, I think that I don't think Drake's going to do another one. Uh, I think the last line of back to back sort of suggested that he said, "I've been working on the six, and now it's back to that." So, uh, sorry, of working on views. I'm sorry, working on views. So yeah, he's referring to views, views from the six. I thought that was done already. Mm, maybe it's not. Maybe he's uh, mastering it. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is a process to it. Well, he's not mastering it, but you know, maybe he's he's hands on. He's a part of the whole process. You never know. If he's the six god, does that mean that he can create something in six days? I don't know. Uh, I, I I saw you you said something about uh about Drake about the hip hop RPG. Would you consider making him a, like some sort of a deity? I mean, he is a mage, so I mean, to, in a he sense, he is. But like that idea of six god, I'm I'm very um I'm very focused on that term that he he refers to himself as that. Um, I am I sound like fucking the whitest James Lipton guy with a dictionary. Yeah, yeah. The, the the six god, um, like fight, ugh. But yeah, he he refers to himself as that, and he loved. I think it's it's super catchy. I think there's something there. There's something to Six God. Um, I can do something with that. I don't know what mm. yet. If it's like he's he he dies and is reborn, that's kind of an overdone trope. I don't want to beat that down. But yeah, something with him being a deity. I, I like that. There's something there. Mm-hmm. Or or him drinking Sprite. I thought about in the next episode having having Meek's uh, corpse in the corner. From him getting bodied, but I, I also thought like I want this thing to last. I want people to watch this seven years from now. Oh, and people sorta... forget about that. They would. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I think that's that's too. I, I think that's too current and something that people like five months from now it might not even be relevant. Yeah, 
Especially if he doesn't even drop a diss record, then it's really gonna be meaningless. Yeah, I know. Like, who's who's this guy? Like, why does he hate Meek Mill? And what if yeah. he dies in real life? I've thought about that, man. What if Kendrick dies? And like, what do I do? You consider him a lot in your day, don't you? I, yeah, I was yeah. listening to that T Pab mm-hmm. today, man. Mm-hmm. Oh God! Don't don't be one of those guys. Don't just say fucking to pimp a butterfly. T Pab is, is, is that fucking lazy? We T-Pap, are T Pab. Two we, syllables. Two syllables. We can't just fucking say to pimp a butterfly. You, to you, pimp you, a you butterfly. Can't. Six syllables versus two. I'm all about. I'm about the quickness, man. Mm. Mm. T-Pap. Why do you have to say the whole thing? Well, because that's why. There's no reason why you should do it. There's no reason other than reason itself, sir. T Pap. Just fucking say it. You know You know what? Have the fucking balls to say the whole title of a name. You know what movie I loved as a kid? Butterfly. Don't be a menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. I didn't I hope you don't, I hope you don't say the whole that. thing. That's, that's awful. Don't you say the whole thing. That's terrible. Well, you can't say don't be a menace. Uh, because, yeah, that's you know, what people say. That's all you need. No, no. Don't be a menace if to you South say Central don't while be a menace, drinking your juice in the about. hood. They know what you're talking about. When you they say, know what I'm talking about, but I got to say the whole thing. I have to say, Daddy has to say the whole thing. I got to get that movie the respect that it deserves. You know what you happens that after, you, after you, if, when you say anything past Menace, they, they're not. They're like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I get it. And you're still, <laughs> what you think in your hood? And you're like, you're like smirking because I know the whole thing. Well, you know, it's because I learned the lesson. I learned that you shouldn't be a menace in the hood, you know, while, while drinking juice. I, I know, I know now. See, I look, for it. instance, I don't say I don't like shit. I don't go outside. I say it, it, it's... What is that? Is that Earl? Is I that did it. I, I did it. I say I did this. I did this. <laughs> See, I just I abbreviate it. It's easier that way. If you were part of any rap group, you'd like to be a part of Odd Future, wouldn't you? No. Yes, I think you would. No, man. So you're saying my abilities are good, right? I'm a rapper, and my I have good abilities. Mm, I didn't say all that. I said if you were part of a group, I didn't. I didn't give you that much clout. Relax. I'm saying, give me give me some context for this theoretical scenario. Okay, give you some context for. Okay, so you were born in Texas. Am I trans? Mm, not yet. Okay, all right. Cool. You're not, you're not gonna realize born... it. You're not right, gonna realize, I, I realize it, it later in life. Okay. After the podcast, that's what. All you right, realize. I was born in Texas. All right, go on. Yeah, so you're I'm born southern, in Texas. Southern. Okay, that's important. Uh, you've got this little shtick where you wear boots with spurs. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you develop some fucking dance where you clink the spurs together, and it's something yeah. like the Nene, but not quite the Nene. Was I a XXL freshman at some point? Yes, you were. Three years ago, in fact. Okay, that's this. Cool. This was the uh, the lost edition of it. You know so, what I want to be a part of? Okay, let me be a part of Nelly's group. Nelly's group. I want to okay. be part of his group. All right, all right. What, what's your name, be, by the way? Uh, Cowboy. Cowboy, ah, it's a little too typical. It's just, you know, that's your, your Please do not judge. Okay. Cowboy is not judge. Okay, cowboy. Okay, okay. MC Cowboy. Cowboy is not judge. That's actually L- uh, Lil Cowboy. My first album. No, 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 <laughs> no, Lil Cowboy. I said my name, and you're gonna say it right. Okay. Okay. When you come through these Texas streets, when you come through Austin, you gotta see the cowboy. We're live on the Double D's podcast here. Yes, this is a live show, and uh, Dominic Robron isn't here right now. But uh, to replace him, we have this uh, new artist. From Texas, we got the Spur Clicker himself, Cowboy. What's up, man? Hey, y'all. Hey, what's up, Cowboy? Cowboy, you got this new track that I got here in this uh, nice little plastic. I don't want to open it up because it is a collector's item. It's called Cattles and Bitches. Mm-hmm. Right? So uh, you're a free agent, right? Mm-hmm. Now. You're a free agent. Uh, who do you want to sign to, sir? Hey, man, you know I'm trying to stay independent for the most part, but you know I was thinking about... Mm-hmm. I want to sign the that label with Nelly and that dude who wore half a face mask. Uh, Murphy, uh, is it Murphy Lee? I'm not sure. Nobody yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He's my idol, but I, I forgot his name. But um, yeah, he he, he, inspired, he inspired me the most. Cowboy, I don't know how to break this to you, but like the Saint Lunatics haven't been relevant since like the Bush administration. What are you talking about, man? They, they just dropped mixtape yesterday. <laughs> Downloaded by all 15 of the Twitter followers. I, I want to be on title. How do I get on there? Yeah, you can stop sounding like Bigot Hogan. Can you tell me how to get on title, though? <laughs> Say, I got to deal with Apple, but I still feel entitled. Oh, that's terrible, man. You didn't like that line? I mean, uh, enti- uh, I got to deal with Apple, and I still feel entitled. 
Uh, the Cowboys, uh, terrible, by the way. Terrible. I, I don't, <laughs> Yo, I, I love I love Cowboys. Uh, cow, cowboy Dude, would not even... be a thing. <laughs> Yo, Cowboy Cowboy is top top five characters. One are of the alive. top five characters. Because I know that you hate him. I'm going to bring him back. Uh, terrible. He sounds like Big and Hogan. Fuck. Hey, man, I'll be back. You don't know when. But I'm going to come back, man. And you're going to feel the heat of these spurs, okay? Just like San Antonio, Texas, brother. <laughs> See you later. He's right. actually big at Hogan. Uh, he keeps coming with bars like that. That you know, we maybe you know, maybe maybe we can fit him in there. Maybe we can. Oh Jesus, there. I'm all sweaty. So last week, uh, <laughs> I was in Baltimore at Otacon anime okay. convention. My roommate's okay. talking to himself again. Just ignore okay. that. Okay. Um, I, I have to ignore that because you guys can't even hear it. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I was in Baltimore anime convention. Um, I didn't. I didn't pay to go have to the sex. Convention. <laughs> we know. We know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had sex in uh, it's been a, it's been about a month. That's serious, and uh, I, it's it's getting it's getting weird now. Mm. It's getting to the point where I'm I'm going through Tinder and I'm just 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 please fucking somebody please yeah that's me. Late at night, two a.m. Just come on, just somebody, anybody. That's a lie. You know that's a lie because I had an opportunity today to go out with a female, but I didn't because you know where I am. Uh, right uh, here. Here? Right here. Oh, is it, is that give, sweet? Let's, let's have up. a collective awe between all of us, huh? I gave One, up the two, three. To... Shut the fuck up, Dom. I gave up the ability to put my penis in a woman repeatedly, <laughs> all right? Doesn't that sound good when I put it that way? Right, repeatedly. Anyway, um, yeah, so Otakom is pretty interesting. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of cosplayers this year. There's always cosplayers. Have you ever seen a cosplayer in person? No, what's a cosplayer? A person who dresses up like a character, Iron Man, your, your Hulk. Your oh, okay. That, I didn't Naruto. know that was the okay. I'm gonna say a bunch of names so you just won't mean it. Naruto, Itachi, fucking Guts from Berserk, Spike from Cowboy Bebop. You know, like half the audience listening to this are raising their hands, like, hey, hey. Anyway, I'm tired of being of, treated like an outsider on this fucking podcast. You know. It's you, half for, my for podcast. Well, I have half custody. Of it. I, I have half I, custody of this podcast. Okay. I'm the producer of this fucking podcast. I'm the producer. I put this shit together, and I don't get any respect from these fucking subscribers because they're always fucking nitpicking, making me, oh, you don't know about that. Can anyway. you put it on SoundCloud, please? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, cosplay? Oh, yeah. You ever, you've never seen a cosplay? It's, it's an interesting thing looking at someone who is dressed like a character in real life. You see a physical manifestation of their fandom. Mm-hmm. Is that a, it's and it's always bizarre. Like I've, I've been going to these conventions for like seven years, but like, it I never quite get over the weirdness. And it, it's cool. Like I, I don't think there's anything wrong with these people. Some of them they're, they're definitely a little crazy. Like some people like behave as the character too. Uh, I think the majority of them are just kind of like I love um, Goku, so I'm just gonna put on an orange outfit and just it's it's fun. But then there are the people like you look at them and you're like, man, I know. You want to be this person so badly. This weekend is the time you get to be this person. Well, can't that be considered a performance art as well? I guess. I guess sort of. I guess it would be it would be considered low on the performance art spectrum. I'm guessing if yeah, it it probably would be considered low. Not to me. I think it's it's cool. Whatever. Maybe it's considered low because uh, it's a bit devalued because there's so many people in the area doing the exact same fucking thing. Maybe mm. performance art sticks out a little bit more if it's just you like got to be the only one doing the it. The only one doing it, maybe I don't know. Yeah, but I watched. So I, I stood there and I watched. Like it was a crowd of about like two hundred, and they do like a hundred. I exaggerated a hundred, and they do these photo shoots where it's like Disney people are gonna meet by the fountain. So it's like dis- at at seven p.m. If you have a costume on about Disney, you meet at the fountain. And it's a huge group of people. I was there for the Disney photo shoot. I was just walking back um, just from eating a, a, a most delicious sandwich. And uh, I, I stood I stood at, at, at by this crowd, and it was super hot outside. And then what they would do is this lady would call out, and she would go, um, like, Cinderella's, Cinderella's. And everyone from the Cinderella, who was dressed up as a Cinderella character, would come up and people would take pictures of them. And people would cheer and stuff and they'd pose like the characters. And I just, I, I guess it didn't sink in into this moment. It's like, I get what they're doing. They just want, 
they want attention. It's like it, it's it's all just kind of a. It's like these moments. Like I look at these girls, and it's like they're dressed up like princesses, and I'm like, this is like the same reason girls like weddings. They just this is their time to have all eyes on them, and you get the pictures of you, and it's like you, you you get to suck up the attention for that moment. Mm-hmm. I know, and you care so little about this. Uh, you I mean, know what I'm actually doing? I'm looking at a bunch of uh, pictures of cosplay, a bunch of females in very kinky suits. I'm seeing oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Chung say, Lee. I'm seeing Tammy. I'd say 30% him. of them are hot. Not all of them. You get, you get a lot of a lot of uh, big girls. Not that there's anything wrong with big girls, but you get a lot of uh, girls who shouldn't be cosplaying as Tammy because it's, it's like, no, come on, come on. Uh, well, are there a lot of people who make up their own characters? Mm, not that many. You know... The biggest, oh, let me just smack my lips a little bit more. The biggest perpetrators of self character create, uh, uh, original character cosplay, I think, are the steampunk crowd. There are a lot of steampunk people who just, like, they'll just, do you know what steampunk is? No. The, I had this moment in my head where I was like, he knows what that is. Like, I, I'm, I'm pandering if I just, all right, anyway, it's, it's like, imagine, fuck, what's the best example of it? It's okay. like uh, looking up steampunk. I mean, it, anything with gears, uh-huh. anything with gears and steam. Like you're wearing a hat and you have goggles on, and you have a tank on your back. That's mm-hmm. steampunk. Okay. That aesthetic. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Those are the people who do their own characters. But most people, most people are doing some shit that exists. The, the Giles and Chun Li's, whatever. So th- this is basically um, Daniel Day Lewis from There Will Be Blood meets a train. Yeah. But he, but he'll, have, he'll have like, like have like a gun that squirts out bullets or something. Yeah, I mean that's squirts a squirts out bullets. A locomotive. Yeah, or like a jetpack or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. You, so you've never seen these guys when they're at New York Comic Con? I I never went to Comic Con. The closest thing the closest thing to any of this is when I uh, when I go out for Halloween in New York City and there's the Halloween parade, oh, which is essentially yeah. really a gay parade is is really what it is. It's it's in the you know. Uh, I, I think that's what they consider it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you'll see some crazy, crazy costumes there. Uh, maybe not as the... polished. Maybe not as polished as the ones that I'm seeing in these cosplay things. But you see some pretty clever stuff. You ever see a gay dude walking around with, like, he's just f- fully nude except for a G-string with his dick. And, and with his dick. And you, you just look at him and he's all painted like a rainbow. And you're like, dude, just, just. Could you just could you just tone it? <laughs> could you just tone it down like a little bit? Right. Like just just to, like I just tone down the gay. Though I guess like, he he would argue. Why don't you turn tone down your heteroness? I'm seeing some pretty mean? good ones, man. I see a pretty good Goku. Uh, you know, little look cute, little Rainbow Bright. Uh, Harley Quinn. I'm if I ever got shit for this podcast, it's gonna be for that comment. Just know, come at me. Ah, oh, come on! I told you, it's it's just, it's not gonna happen. The daddy, it's just abs- any, anyone walking around with that shit, it's daddy just absorbs it's like, all the hair. Hey, hey, he's like, wait, hey. he's like, okay, all right, chill. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Yeah, okay, back. See? All right, back to the show. I'm not look, looking at too many pictures, but anyway, okay. So b- back to demeaning you because you're 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 joining this uh, this fucking convention of fucking mm-hmm. freaks and fucking malcontents. You, you, you guys are freaks. fucking you 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 you're weird. Uh, you're a, a, a lot of you walking around probably don't brush your teeth. Your breath smells. Almost every the kid that I knew in high problem. school. Almost <clears throat> every kid that I knew in high school that was in the comic books, in the wrestling, in everything. You cannot get too close to them because they all s- happen to suffer from halitosis. I don't know what it was. Maybe being a fan of wrestling or being a fan of video games means that you don't have enough time to brush your teeth. But it was like a constant fucking theme. I don't know why it draws that type of person. And I've wondered that. You know it's what type like, of person I'm talking about. That really know, overbearing like, person like who laughs at everything. Snowy. And he's got a fucking graphic novel in his hand with a fucking... He, he's got like a Thundercat jacket with a... A Thundercat shirt with a leather jacket. But, but enough about me, am I right? Um, <laughs> yeah, those guys. I think it's like it's really an escape for them, and I think any any story is an escape. But I think that type of dude is um, it's even more of an escape for them. It's like they're really just. It, it's like their their hygiene and everything is like second place. Like meeting girls is is third place. Everything. Everything is below them experiencing the story and, and escaping. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I, I guess there there are guys who feel that way about sports too, right? I mean, 
feel what way about sports? That that it's like they just want to watch the game and just fucking sit there, sit down, and like not shower for nine days. <laughs> You ever seen that movie Big Fan? I think it's called Big Fan of Patton Oswalt. Ah, oh, with Patton Oswalt, right. Is that, yeah. Was that good? Mm. It was okay. I mean, I like the I like the idea of it, but something about it, it, it went stale towards the end of the movie. But Patton Oswalt is a good actor. I think he's a pretty yeah. good actor. Do you see a Young Adult? No, I didn't see that. That's that's with uh, Cherie Theron. Charlie Theron. Oof. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, she 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 uh, came up in White Girl Monthly, didn't she? Yeah, I, I <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I, uh, I I subscribe to the uh, Diamond Club of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, she got like three or four Meg Ryan's. Yeah, she got a, a few of them. This month on uh, White Girl Monthly, we have a very special uh, feature on Charlize Theron, and um, I gave her four Meg Ryan's out of a possible five because. Um, there was not simply not more of her in Mad Max Fury Road. I wanted to see more of Furiosa, and uh, I masturbated furiously to pictures of her from that picture. All right, uh, moving on. <laughs> I bet there are some some dudes who got asthma tingles from that. <laughs> Every time you make that voice, they hold their devices like, next to their crotch. I have a good weird, weirdo story about a guy I met in Portland. Mm. Um, I was out. I was outside of um, Ground Control, which is a, it's a, it's like barcade. It's a combination arcade bar. Shit's back in the eighties, and uh, I was I was hanging out outside with some people, some comedians. It was a it was after a, a comedy show, and there was this kid who looked like Tayson Day from Chocolate Rain. He looked a lot like him. I would have thought that it was him if his voice wasn't deep. The kid had like a high pitched voice. So he's like a, a little mixed kid. A do- dorky looking kid with like but he was he was wearing like uh like a like a vest like a suit vest and like a button down shirt and like dre- dress pants and shoes and I was like what, what are you like and it was like it was like 10 at night it's like what are you doing like did you dress up to meet girls like what the fuck are you, are you doing anyway so he come I, I saw him in the bar and I, I remember thinking this guy is weird he's he, the way he moves you just my, my, my creep alert went on it's fucking uh, I don't know, there's something weird about him. So I go outside, and everyone's smoking, and he sort of, he wanders out very slowly, and he sort of looks at me, and I'm like, oh, all right. Mm-hmm. And he just, he walks up to me, and he's like, hey, man, uh, can, can, can I ask you something? And I was like, uh, yeah, all right. And I, I was talking to other people at the time. You see these broken dicks, or is it just me? Because I see tons of broken dicks all did over you, the did place. You, did you see the broken dicks? Uh, they're, 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 they're all around me. <laughs> like, I know, I know, buddy. I know, brother. But, um, so he asked me, he goes, um, do you think hip hop is, uh, is self-destructive or, or violent? And I was like, but the way he, a- he actually asked it a lot more aggressively than that. And I, I remember I said to him, I was like, oh, we're going to, we're going to do this right now. All right. I guess we're going to do this because I just knew that it was going to go down this path and it went exactly like I thought it would. I told him, no, I, th- I thought it was art. And I think. That art doesn't make people kill anybody. I think it's self-expression, and he, of course, he was on the other angle of saying that hip hop is like he thinks it's it's inherently evil. And then he said like he thought hip hop hip hop music was programming, and he's like that's not it's not art it's programming. And I'm like programming for what? Mm. And he's like he 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 basically started going into Illuminati territory about how it's like the, the powers that be are using hip hop to control us and everything and he's like you got to think about it man don't you ever think about it like all the violence in it man hmm. i'm just sitting there looking at him and i'm like and my my threshold it's like it, it's peaking like i'm 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 ready to just eject and i i just looked at him and i'm like no man like i just like have you you met people like that right Aggressive people in general, or aggressive wanna, people on the topic of, of hip hop? Yeah, yeah, definitely, De- definitely. There's a the, there's a conspiracy guy that they lure you in. You know, it's on the false pretenses. It's like I want to have a discussion with you, but it's like no, I don't want to have a discussion with you. I want to impose my opinion all over you. That's basically what he did. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so did he get, like, progressively closer to you as he disagreed with you? Because that's you what I'm imagining. He's like, no, man, he's got his hand behind your head. And he's like, <laughs> he, was, he was, like, sucking my dick. No, um, he actually, what, I, what I'll give him is for a crazy person, he knew how to keep his distance. 
he kept his voice at a reasonable volume. And the best thing about him is he knew when to leave. At some point, he could tell that I, I had enough. And I was really close to being like, all right, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I have nothing else. But um, he sort of like put out his cigarette. He's like, well, uh, oh, 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 okay, man. He just walked away kind of dejectedly. And I'm like, okay, have a good night. But he knew, he knew when his time was up. Hmm. But that was like fucking, that was, that was the weirdest person I met out there. Thought he was going to come up to you and say, are you dumb? Now, what do you think about hip hop and blah, blah, blah? If he had said that, I would have been like, yeah, I believe it's programming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you, it's a fan, I just agree with it, whatever You know say. me. You know me. Oh, shit. Yes. Well, those are the, the those are the kind of people you'll run into when you uh, when you go to things like that, sir. I mean, you know, you, you, you don't you don't like playing with the monkeys. Get the fuck out of the zoo. You don't get the fuck out of there. You're right. Fucking weirdos. It's too weird. Though you yourself are there, so you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, did you speak to any females while you were out there at all? Uh, a couple ones from Tinder. I made the mistake. I thought I talked about this on the show already. How I I was talking to like four at once. No. Yeah, that was that was my error. Like, if and here's a little tip for you guys: if you go out to some place, you only have a weekend. It's gonna be tempting to like if you get a bunch of attention like I did. It's gonna be tempting to try and balance all of them at once. Because I was thinking, I was like, man, what if I could, what if I could get one every night? What if I too ambitious, far too ambitious? Because what happened was, I didn't put enough time into each one. I, if I had more, if I had one more week, I would have done really well. But I didn't have it. I only had a weekend. Plus, I was hanging out the whole time, um, so I, I couldn't be sitting there texting the whole time. Um, so I basically, I got nowhere. But I got an even, I, I got to an even level with four girls instead of just focusing on one, which is what I should have done from the beginning. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Th- those are the girls I talked to. I did talk to one. Oh, I said the most douchiest thing. Oh, God. Let me read this text. This, this, was, this was this girl that I I knew that she liked me because she was asking if I was single and shit. And we didn't get to hang out. But um, here's the last thing I sent her. And you you, you tell me whether or not it's really douchey. Oh, fuck. Do I still have this? My, my roommate. My roommate just mutters, shut up, from the from the living room. What are you talking Not about? talking to you, but he's talking to himself? I mean, probably. See, I, I always had this moment where it's like, is, is, it, is it about me? Like, what? Mm. Ugh. Yo, anyway, the last thing I said to this girl was I said I said something like, oh, uh, God damn, what did I say? I was like, stay single or, or, or something like that. Or, or like, try, uh. yeah, try. I was like, try and stay single until the next time I see you. Uh, you gotta try fight those stay, guys off with a stick. Try and stay single for the next time. Uh, How horrible is that? And she didn't. She didn't respond. She I'm glad she right. did, and then she fucking, good. Good for her. She, you, she you, you, fucking, you dice. You're not even a douche. You're a dice for that. Yeah, needy. Um, you needy dice. I know, right? Like I, I should have just not said anything. Mm, well, you know. I mean, what are you gonna do? You tried, but uh, you struck out. Yeah, man. I struck out. Uh, uh, Daddy uh, has been going through uh, uh, an issue here. I don't know if, if this room sounds like it's echoing just a bit more, but uh, but recently I found out that I had bed bugs. That I have bed bugs. I'm sorry. Oof. Yes. Um, I had been going through a few nights where I've been itching, and I didn't know why until just the other day. Uh, one of my kitty cats was on top of the bed, and I noticed that there was a bug around them, and I thought it was a bug. But uh, when I looked up, you know, when I looked up bed bugs, this thing was identical to what was on my bed. You know, I've never really seen one. Are they are they the red the red ones? Yeah, they're sort of reddish, maybe a little blackish reddish, something like that. But I, I don't think this is sinking in about how gross this is. Yeah, I mean, I have no idea how it happened, but I will say this: uh, you know, after doing some research, I found out that. Yeah. That it was my, uh, the management company. I'm itching, I'm itching now, I'm itching. It, it's the landlord's duty to uh, to cover the cost for the exterminator. Yeah. So what I did was, you know, I called my super, and judging by how quickly my super responded, 
I knew that this was an issue that's been going on throughout the whole building. I don't know if it was spreaded, you know, throughout oh the apartments. My God. But he isn't normally so responsive, re- receptive to things. So he he said, "All right, I'll call somebody and have them schedule an appointment." And sure enough, I spoke to somebody later that day who had uh, scheduled an appointment with me, and then they came earlier today. But the really nasty thing you really want to know that nasty thing about bed bugs uh. is. On the sides of of my mattress, oh my there goodness. are like black blotches. No, no. I guess is it your blood? It's, no, they've gotten enough of that. I don't think they. Oh suck, Jesus! Uh, there are these blotches. Am I using the right word? It's like this splat of yeah, like man. black on the side, and that's actually the nests. Oh, that's fuck. where the eggs are hatched. Now, I was instructed. Oh. I was instructed that I do not have to throw out my mattress. I don't have to throw out my matches because, you know, those things are only on the side. They're very small, but if you look really close, you'll see them. It's, it's not it's not gross. It's not like graphic. That's what I thought. Because- it's like a ooze. It's like a, a, a like a pus, a pus consistency, black ooze dripping off of well, the bed. That's here, what I'm imagining. Here's one thing that we haven't addressed. Uh, you are a vagina. Okay. And anything to you is, uh, is disgusting and you can right. detest it. Go on. Okay. So, the, you know, the things are on the side or whatever. So I was instructed that I, that I don't have to throw it out. But the other day when I came inside my building, I found uh, I saw that somebody had thrown out a perfectly new mattress and it was outside in the trash. I can Don't tell only me you pulled assume... that shit. Don't tell me. You... No. Oh, uh, what are you talking about? What the I thought you were going to say. You... So so uh, daddy bought it up and uh, sleep is sleeping. <laughs> is sleeping in that used sleeping disgusting in... mattress. Now. No, I've been sleeping on an air mattress. No. Um, uh, I can only assume that that mattress was thrown out because of the same situation. You should have examined it. You should have got up close to to confirm your suspicions. Yeah. Well, man, I mean, this 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 thing is crazy. I mean, I've got I've got to take my clothes and uh, I got to bag it up. I got to wash uh, a lot of my clothes. It's definitely a transition. I feel th- th- this apartment feels empty. Like I said, there's a, there's an echo in this room because there's no picture frames anywhere. There's no clothes, so y- you know the sound is just bouncing off of the walls here. When's the exterminator coming? Uh, he came already today. What did he? What did he do? Did he? Did he fumigate or whatever the fuck the word is? I was in. He was. Uh, my super was here. Does it smell like a bunch of chemicals? No, no, no. It doesn't smell like it at all. What I was did told. He do? That, I was told that he just sprayed the bed and certain areas of of the bedroom, but he didn't spray the rest of the house. It was just the bedroom. Did you grow up with roaches in your apartment? Because I had a bunch. Of Let me tell you. Of course. Of course, I grew up with oh roaches my in my God. apartment. That's a it's see, but in this building, funny enough, I mean, maybe it could be the fact because I have uh, cats, but don't see a lot of roaches in this building, in this apartment. You don't see mm-hmm. a lot of them. I don't see any mice. I, that's because I have because I have two kit, two, uh, two mm-hmm. cats. Mice don't like the smell of cats, so they stay away from. Them. So, you know, uh, it's 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 definitely a, a bit of a transition here. And uh, I'm actually allowed to sleep on my bed tonight, and I hope I don't get those itches because that would mean that they're still there. But I'm pretty sure they got them out. Were you actually itching? Yeah, in the middle of the night because you know what I thought it was? Oh I had gotten God. allergic reactions at one point. I've gotten allergic reactions in my life, you know, like at bedtime, but there were heat rashes. You know what I'm saying? And they, and they look different than the, than the bites that I had on my body. And then, you know, everything made sense once I... I didn't even suspect that it was bed bugs. I didn't even conceive that it could have been bed bugs. It slipped my mind. Hmm. Bed, bed bugs are kind of like AIDS. It's like you don't think it could happen to you, but it will. It and you're, and you're will. creeping under my skin. And you're creeping under my skin. It's going to happen to you, brother. Yeah. Gonna, well, what are you going to do when the bed bugs come biting on you? <laughs> so this the, is the, never the this has never happened to you. You've never experienced. This. I never had bed bugs. I had plenty of roach experiences, especially growing up in in Brooklyn, New York, and East Flatbush. Uh, oof, mm-hmm. God, a lot of like and the king roaches too. Like those ones that are like the size of your thumb. They oh. have wings. They just kind of strut around. They're like what? And they fly. Those uh, motherfuckers. You ever seen one of those? Pus just comes out of them when you fucking just stomp them. Uh, yeah. Imagine just. Healing one of those up and just <laughs> like how hungry would you have to be? Uh, well, d- apparently we're not even eating those. We're eating each other first. We're not. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those. Mike's eats. <laughs> no, no, he was low on the list. Yeah, yeah, he was low. He was low. Very low on the list. Um, but yeah, the, he, he, a lot of 
we we had mice. Uh, yeah, fuck, it's gross. Is it really that gross though? Roaches? Is, is it as bad as we think it is? It's probably not that bad. Yeah, roaches are disgusting. I, f- I find roach- roaches to be fucking. They are disgusting. But I'm saying on a grand scheme of things, if you sort of zoom back, is, is it really that bad? Like they eat they eat food when you leave it out. If you don't leave food, they're not out. It's, it's kind of. I mean, well, a roach as, isn't disgusting when you see it. Say in the like, if you see a roach on a park bench, it's not disgusting because it's outside. Roaches. <laughs> What's he doing? Reading a book <laughs> <laughs> on a park bench? What's he doing there? He's uh, he's reading uh, Nietzsche on on the bench. <laughs> he's uh, it's only disgusting because it's in your apartment. I think I think that's why you find it the test It's like it's your you're a human being. You're domesticated. You're you're not out in the wild. And when you see something, you know, like an insect, it, it's an inconvenience to you. It's it's not disgusting. It's just an inconvenience. It's like I have to look at that in the comfort yeah. of my home. Ugh. Hey, yo, shout out to anybody who's feeling the willies right now. I right? shout out. Feeling the willies? Uh, what, what is this? Getting the getting the willies, getting the get, getting the creeps. Anyone getting, getting the creeps or the, 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 the again? This has to, this has to do with you and and and, and your softness and. The, uh, are you are you the type that when you see a mouse you you fucking jump you you, you get all crazy? No man, I'll, I'll fucking. They're, mice are kind of cute. Rats are disgusting. Okay, but I see a, I see a, a, a mouse. Uh, he he's dead. I'm gonna try and kill him. Mm-hmm. I'm not at all concerned about killing pets. I don't care about the lives of pests. I don't give a fuck. Like a spider I'll smush his ass. They're gross. Did you hear about this? Thing, uh, what was it that uh, some dentist that killed a lion? Yes, I what's, did. What's this controversy over this? Uh, I, yeah, but he apparently he paid to have to do the safari. They just got the wrong lion. Well, run this run this through me because someone had mentioned this to me. I just didn't look into the story. I Cecil have, the I, lion. I, yeah, I don't have all the details. All the details. Ooh, ugh. The de- I don't have all the de- the details, but apparently it was like, um. God, I wish I could bring up the news story right now. A dentist went on a safari with a bunch of other people, a bunch of locals, I I guess, and other rich people, and they paid, like, $50,000 to go on some safari. And that money ends up going back to, like, conservation and sort of, like, uh, preserving the the park and sort of uh, funding, like, getting lions to fuck more, all that sort of shit. They fund lion porn, whatever. And I think he went. I mean, they they lured him. Apparently, they lured Cecil out of like a designated area where they shouldn't have been anyway. And they killed this lion that was beloved, some, some supposedly beloved. It's like how can you love a lion? He's just fucking. He's like all, all the fucking lions. Just make make more of them. That's what I don't get. Is like, like he's like, can't they just make more of them? Fuck. Mm-hmm. Are they endangered? Lions. Yeah. I've never heard anything about a lion being endangered. They just sit around fucking sleeping all day, and they don't have any predators. Oh, yeah, except humans. <laughs> Apparently, right. you're you're not listening to the story. They don't have any predators. That's totally fine. There's a lion's never get killed. All right, let me um, let me read let me read the Wikipedia page because they know everything. On one, first of July, he was shot and killed after an American. Oh, hang on. What's up? Hey, do you, do you have some cigarettes? Yeah, uh, yeah. D- 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 Dom is uh, having a conversation with yeah, uh, yeah. his roommate yes. over there. By the way, I want to let yeah. you guys know that that's not really Dom's roommate. It's actually his gay lover. Uh, Absolutely. Sadly, I had to drop this bomb on you guys this way, but... <laughs> Yo, Dom, I done exposed you. T- listen, brother. Drop me another bomb. <laughs> God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Drop that bomb. <laughs> It's unnatural. You feel me? If they were nothing but homosexuals on this earth, we would all cease to exist. One more bomb. <laughs> what did he say to you, man? What, what, what uh, he asked if I had scissors. You couldn't hear it from the mic? Uh, That's good. Uh, uh, no, no, I definitely heard. I just started talking as soon as he fucking started Damn talking. It. Yeah, he asked if I had scissors. You got to get your roommate working. to get on the podcast. Is that, is that ever? Is that ever? Can, can, can you get your roommate to come on the podcast now? I don't. Think so? No, because I'm wearing I'm wearing shorts that have a big ass hole in them, so and I, I don't want to have to change out of my shorts. No, because like you know why? Because I don't want to I don't want to put him in a position where it's like he feel like he feels like he has to. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I don't I don't want to annoying him. I feel like he's he's better off. He's like he doesn't really want to be. Well, one scenario would be that he would agree to come on the podcast. It would be it would tank. 
we would totally bomb. Mm-hmm. And the other scenario would be that he would fucking say no. I'm not interested on being on your stupid fucking podcast. And that would yeah, be he's hilarious. Like, that's what I'm. You. That's what I'm mostly concerned about. It's like that stupid shit I hear you doing when you're talking to yourself for an hour every fucking week. To some dumb guy. I don't want to deal with that shit. So this just never comes up in conversation with you. Oh, I, never. And that's one reason why. Because like, he doesn't listen. Yeah, but he's got to know. He's he's seen the microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows that I, I do he's, one. But he's it's seen like, this stuff. So it's like, don't ask, don't tell, really. Right, but he doesn't listen to any podcast either. So that's the other thing. It's like he's not a fan of them. Yeah, but but I mean, it, when you're roommates with somebody. I mean, if, if you don't mind going into this. When you're roommates with somebody. uh you would figure that you know some conversation would spark like if you're in the middle of the living room it's like hey man so so like what are you doing today and you just so happen to say oh you know my two podcasts and he's like well what did you just say I do a podcast I do a, uh, yeah 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 that that never happens um you know I never mention when I'm doing the show because I know it's it's kind of not relevant information mm-hmm. and it's just gonna be like uh oh okay cool cool it's gonna be that so like why even talk about it plus I, I'm I'm very I know I'm very like defensive about like. I don't talk much about what I'm doing mm-hmm. to uh, civilians. Let's call them <laughs> Civil- No, no, but um, like you, I tell you pretty much everything I'm working on. But it's like I, I feel. Um, but this is one of my hangups: is I feel like everyone doesn't give a shit, so I just need to not talk about things unless I'm uh, explicitly asked what I'm doing. Okay, okay, okay. I used to be like two years ago, but you know, back when I started DSE, it was like. I was so excited about it that I would talk about it. I, I would tell him about it. I'd be like, "Oh, I got this! I got an interview with Ashley Birch. All oh, shit, blah blah blah." blah. Um, and then it sort of tapered off when I realized, "Oh yeah, like I'm." I didn't. I don't think in hindsight that I was talking too much about it, but I I questioned my my motives for bringing it up. It's like, like what you you need his approval? Like what? Wait, 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 like why do you bring it up? Like what do you right. what do you need? What do you need from this? Right. Because, I mean, like I said, the reaction would always be like, oh, okay, okay, cool. So I'm like, why do I even, not that I want, even if I got a huge reaction, like, whoa, good for you, good for you, you got an interview. Like, if I got that, I wouldn't want to talk about it either. So I'm just, it's much easier for me to just not talk about it. Mm-hmm. You just got a glimpse of how fucking, ugh, You know, like I, my brain I think just... this podcast would be enhanced if just occasionally your roommate stands outside the door and he just has like a one minute monologue about something random that would be so just, good just a think... riff just one little riff that has nothing to do with anything that we're covering and all of a sudden when he feels like it that's when he goes all of a sudden he just stops and says and the one thing that i hate about traffic cops yeah, and he yeah, just yeah. goes off on traffic cops for a minute and we're not even sure when he's done. He doesn't say anything. It just yeah, stops, yeah. and it's ju- it just goes away. If See, but that's the thing. That's the thing. You came up with the uh, that idea. Mm. You did. So it's like it would, it would you would be the roommate to do that. Or, or like that's the problem with these things. Is it's like you have any like in, inviting friends into your into this world. It's like is it your job to dictate what happens? Well, I've, I've had friends. We, we did a podcast with, with a friend of mine. The, the podcast, unfortunately, got fucking the, the the microphone had an issue, so we couldn't hear it that well. But, you know, I have. Yeah, yeah, but I, I just, I always get this feeling that it's like, I feel like it's not my responsibility to it sort of. It takes a village to raise a child. I know we argue about this shit, but it it's like. It takes a village, and it takes a village to raise a podcast, sir. It does. You know what I decided, man? I'm getting the wings after this. I'm doing it, <laughs> and we are. We we talk about it before. I, I feel so good right now. I'm doing a show. I'm happy about the fucking. My life is going well. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm gonna get some wings. I just, I'll work out tomorrow. I'll work out tomorrow. This guy's I'm not gonna work out. I'm not this, gonna work. this guy's gonna cry in like two minutes. Uh, this, he's gonna fucking have a meltdown. Look, and, I, and I'm, I'm and I'm good. And I, I'm I'm good. And I'm I'm I just I feel good about my my life. Okay, I, and I just. <laughs> I just want to tell you guys that I, I just, I, I'm, I'm good. And even though that girl left me, okay, even though that girl left me, I, I, I just want to say that. I, <laughs> which of us are more, who is more likely to cry, to cry on, the on the podcast? To cry on the podcast. To cry. Well, Dude. cry about what? 
There are many things that you can cry. About. No, okay, okay. I'll, I'll give a, I'll give us this credit. Okay. Not a sob. Not <laughs> that shit. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh shit. Well, I- I'm sorry, guys. My mic levels. My I mic cried levels on the podcast really one time. I cried on the podcast one time. Uh, there was a point in this podcast one time where you were doing some imitation of of Arnold Schwarzenegger, mm-hmm. and at one point you get you did the trademark Arnold, you know, y'all. But when you said it, it sounded like halal. <laughs> I rem- yeah, the halal. So I, mean, just, I don't know why that made you, you just laugh kept so hard. saying halal. And for whatever reason, I don't know what it was, man. La- laughter like that, when it comes when it comes along, it's just it's just a random thing. It's just a random button gets pushed inside of you, yeah, and you I can't don't... explain it anymore. It just fucking happens. I'll, I'll I'll tell you something else. The other day, I was riding around with a friend, and he had his uh his little cousin in the back seat. His younger cousin's name is Dennis, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, they see each other a lot. They have a dynamic together. So he casually refers to his cousin as Penis. And okay. for whatever reason, I laugh for about 15 minutes. I continue to laugh and to stumble on it. Just for some reason, Penis, the name Dennis converted into Penis for whatever reason just made me laugh unstoppable. I, I don't yeah. know why. I have no. And sometimes you, you just can't. As an just, adult? <laughs> yes, this happened about two weeks ago. Oh, you know what? I'm going to tell you one right now. Um, and this is not... I, I don't even want to preface. It, it's not PC. It's kind of... It's very mean. But uh, So I'm, I'm hanging out with my friends at the convention. And we're sitting in the hotel room. Uh, and um, I'm not going to take that Kendrick reference that I... This low-hanging fruit. But mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> I'm in the hotel room. And they're telling me about this... Tyler Perry movie for colored girls. Okay. You ever seen it? Maybe. So Michael Elia is in it. And you know, like Tyler Perry movies, it's like everything. You, you, you sort of uh, turned me on to this by saying that everything. One no characters. Is, one was that? No, yeah. One, yeah. One but no it's characters. extremes. It's like you cheat on your man. You get AIDS. Um, yeah, you don't, right, you don't right, just right. lose your kids; they right. die. Yes, you yes. know what I mean. Everything like you don't just lose your job. It's like you you you're a convicted felon now. Everything is like extremes. Mm-hmm. So they were telling me about this for colored girls movie, and it's like this woman loses custody of her kids, and no, 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 no. She she's Michael Ely is her husband, a beautiful blue eyed Michael Ely, the the light skinned devil in this movie, and. At some point, the way they describe it to me is that he they're in an argument and he takes a, her baby and flings it out of the window. <laughs> okay, I haven't seen in, this movie. In New York, he just flings it out. Right. And I must have got over it. Cause, but when they said that, I, I started screaming, laughing. I, I dropped on the bed. I was crying. Like, I was like, heaving, just... <gasps> Mm. And and no one else was like laughing. It was just it was just me imagining, imagining this baby flying out the window like a frisbee. There's like 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 how did like how did he toss it? I wanted to know if it was like an overhand. <laughs> like <laughs> are you? Being... <laughs> I wanted to know if it was an overhand throw. Is he underhand it? Like how do you how do you throw a baby? Right? Out did he like underhand it like a softball pitcher? How did yeah he... yeah. Do you, do you want to go easy on it? Like make sure to the, make make the trip a little more enjoyable for it. Like. Or do you just do it like from the side, like a frisbee? And then I imagine like, like what if it hit? What if it like connected with the window on its way out? So it's like, boop, and it just like. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there dying. But that was one of those moments, and like no one else was laughing but me, mm-hmm. and that made me laugh even harder for some reason. I was like, I, I have, I have problems. Well, I think I think that goes back into uh, what we had a conversation. What you, um, I forgot what was the term that you referred to. You said uh, impure. Th- I, think, I don't know if you said impure thoughts. Intrusive thoughts. That's Intrusive what it is. thoughts. Yep, right. Exactly. Because I had I had the conversation with the uh, with an older gentleman in the store, and he told me that his uh, his wife died. Uh, this guy was in his 80s, and uh, then he had uh, asked me about a product, and I said, "Oh no, that product's expired." And then the thought in my head was, "Just like just your like wife." Your wife. Yeah. yeah, so it's just one of those things that just get dropped inside no, your brain. Yeah, I get those all the time, man. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking horrible. This means you're but, a bad person. This this automatically yeah, but just, means that just you're a bad person. Just remember that acknowledging that uh, acknowledging these things is it's a big step to sort of yeah you you acknowledge that you're human and you make mistakes and it's like you you know that it's not you. 
Mm. There you go, the more you know, fellas. <laughs>